Hello, this is Team with Vidisk, and I'm back with another video for you today. Today, I have a full breakdown of the Grip EQ ATS. This is not a new bag in their lineup. It is a bag that was made for Letchstone. It's a collaboration between Letchstone Open in um, Southern Illinois with Grip EQ, and they made this particular bag just for the um, that tournament, and it was a player's pack, and that's how I got a hold of one of these bags. This bag is called the ATS because it does take some components from the E series and it does, the TS stands for the Tory series. So it's instead of uh, ha taking the components from the B series, it's kind of a hybrid between A series and B series. What that means is that the main compartment is wide enough, just like the A series, a little bit, but a little bit smaller than the B series. The top uh, compartment here takes uh, from the B series and not the A series. And then the side pockets uh, from the smaller, um, smaller, bags um on some of the b series and not the bx3 but uh the other b series that it, that it has available online this bag is not available at grip eq's website it is only available at ledgestone's website for purchase it retails at 229 it does come with a special edition edition buzz right now um i don't know how long that deal is going to run for but i do know that's what's going on right now as of the recording of this video i'm going to go ahead and take the weight of this uh, bag and i'm also going to take some dimensions i'm going to go with overall the exterior and the interior of the bag what some of the features are with the tour series they call it the a tour series because a stands for the some components of the a series and then ts stands for the tour series because they're hoping this bag is for those who want to take it um, to tournaments so it does have the capacity, it does have a small form factor of a B series, it's not as wide and big as an A series, um, a full blown AX5, but um, anyways, moving on from there, I will go ahead and put everything that I no normally have or can fit into the bag, discs, um, a long sleeve shirt, a hoodie, stool, and water bottle, and I'll show you how all that looks on the bag itself. So let's start off with the weight of the bag. Okay, I just got done taking the uh, weight of this bag and it reads 3.8 on my scale. This is the same scale that I use in all of the bags and all my videos, just to keep it consistent. Um, I really don't know. Um, Grip didn't really put a description on the Letchstone's website to say how much this is supposed to weigh. Again, this is not available at their website, so I really don't know what the actual weight is um, coming out of the manufacturer but that's what I measured 3.8 is 0.1 pounds lighter than their BX3 and it's definitely lighter than their um, AX5 series. Um, just to give you an idea, the BX3 listed on Grip Eco's website is 4.2 pounds. That's what they measure at their manufacturer. On my scale right there, it says 3.9, I measured it three times. This bag I measured it four times and it came with a 3.8 all four times. So as, um, as far as I can tell right now, it is a little bit lighter than the BX3. However, it is rated to carry more discs than the BX3. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the bag. All right, we got the close-up of the bag here, and uh, we'll start off with the materials themselves. This particular model, um, for whatever reason, they decided to go with an 840D and 630D nylon material. Their other bags normally are 1000D nylon and a 420D nylon material. However, they reconfigured their um, ratio and um, the materials that they're using and it overall it does save a little bit of weight and as you can see i measured at 3 3.8 and um the bx3 was a 3.9 on my scale so it's roughly lighter than the bx3 however it's supposed to have a higher capacity in the main compartment and i'll go over that later on in the video so i just want to let you guys know that on this bag here so first off let's start with the top of the bag right here by the way the color scheme on this bag is pretty cool i really really like it um when i first got it i was in awe by the how bright the red how bright the blue and there's a bright blue and a navy blue on the side here so for the last month or so i've been rocking this bag and i have been enjoying using this bag very much so um so just to give you an idea the zippers and everything are ykk zippers um, all the all of the um, hardware on here on the zippers uh, on the straps like for example the clips these are all Duraflex so they're very high quality materials on um, a, a bag just like a you know any grip EQ bag basically so like I said earlier at the top we have a YKK zipper that's blue it the one of the things that I love about grip is that 
if I put the zipper back here, pull the zipper back here, there's a little rubberized material here where the zipper goes and sits right in there. So the zipper at the end right here doesn't get um, worn down and it does fit right in this little pocket, a rubber pocket. And I think that's a really nice touch on grips bags. I don't think all bag manufacturers do this, just grip that grip does this. The zipper pulls are actually also pretty cool. It's got this colored like hard plastic almost rubberized material on the end and I think that's a really cool zipper pull um, touch that they have on all their bags. Opening up the pocket, this is the putter pocket. This is ready to hold three putters and I've been using it as such. I didn't really need a break-in period when I started using this bag. I was able to fit three putters in here from the get-go just fine. And uh, I didn't really see any problems with it causing the zipper to wear, um, but I've only used it for a month and I want to say I put in um, probably 30, maybe 40 rounds. I can't remember, but um, I put, let's just call it 30 rounds, 30 rounds in here and I have not seen any wear and tear on the zipper itself. Moving on from there, this Moral uh, mor right here or Moral, I don't know what it's called, but this print right here is from the um, uh, Eureka, the Eureka course that's famous in Peoria for the Letchstone Open. So that's what you see on the sides here on the print, the top, the sides, and the bottom right here. Moving on from there, there is a whole entire patch right here. These, these patches came with the bag. And then the only other thing that came with the bag was a bunch of discs from the players pack. So when you purchase this bag from Letchstone's website, you will not receive what I received. Um, you will only receive the special edition buzz along with these patches. So this is the left stone patch and this is the grip bag and they are rubberized and I do like this bright red and white color grip. I don't see a lot of red grip um, rubberized velcro patches available. Moving down from there. Oh, sorry. One more thing. I almost forgot. This is one of my favorite pockets that Grip makes. This is the Valuables pocket. In the past, uh, I'll give you a little, little bit of just quick background. I've had a Grip back since probably 2014. 2012 was when they first uh, came out with their first release bags for their pros, the Signature Series bags for Nate Doss and Valerie Jenkins and uh, Avery Jenkins. Those three got their bags kind of like right when the Grip EQ just released their backpacks. Two years after that, they started producing bags for the mass market, and that's when I got my first bag. So I've had grip bags for quite some time. Pretty much every year of my life, I've had a grip bag somewhere in my closet or have used one or another. And they've always had this pocket, and they call it the valuables pocket. It has evolved over the years. It now has this hard material in the top and the hard material here to kind of like create a bubble for the bag for the pocket itself. In the past it was a soft material and sometimes it would fold, but this does not fold as much. So this pocket has evolved over the years. We can fit quite a lot of stuff in here and it does not really touch anything. It doesn't really mess with the putter pocket or the main compartment. It also has a YKK zipper that will close it just like that. Moving down from there, this little flap right here, inside the flap itself, I don't think you can see it, but there is a pencil holder on this side and there's also a pencil holder on this side. There's two pencil holders um, on this flap itself. This flap is wide enough to hold an entire disc. Sometimes you can probably fit two in there depending on how thick the disc is. Moving down from there, the main compartment does have a bright blue zipper with also the same red zipper pull that we saw earlier. The flap inside has a um, a nice little foam along with a velcro piece here. This velcro piece matches its counterpart that's inside. The velcro is towards the back of the bag and not on the putter pocket. It's towards the back of the bag here. Push that in, match the velcro, and you have yourself a flap that's wide open. It stays open for you to get in and out of the main compartment. Inside is just a normal black interior and it does house a lot of discs. And then moving on from there, it's the same little pouch right here. This pouch can be used for a rain fly or a, an extra disc or scorecard. I generally don't use anything there because I don't like anything in my way of my disc coming out of the main compartment. And then you got the same print at the bottom here. I believe the material here is 630D nylon material. And then the bottom here, I believe is the 840D nylon material. In the bottom of the bag itself, you'll see that there are two rails, which is Grip's signature um, components. 
they are screwed into a hard plate on the bottom of the bag themselves. So all those, all these are screwed in. I have had a bag, an AX4, where these screws came off and Grip EQ has a lifetime warranty. So what they did was they sent me, um, and I just checked this morning, they still have the same lifetime warranty. And you do, you can register this ATS if you are a Ledgestone um, participant with Grip and your ATS will also have the same lifetime warranty. Um, so when I had the issue with the rail, I told them, I sent them pictures, I sent them that uh, invoice that I do own the bag, and then they just sent me a whole new bag. It seems like their lifetime warranty currently still holds the same process. So I just want to let you know that. I have used this bag for a month and you can see it's all dirty and scuffed up already. So yes, this bag has been used quite a bit. Moving on from there. Oh, one more thing. I do want to show you guys something. Inside the main compartment, you will see a red drawstring right here. This red drawstring allows for you to adjust your putter pocket. It used to be called a quiver pouch. I don't know if it's still called that now, but when the grip first came out, this interior piece of fabric right here, it's just a piece of fabric that just goes up and down like this to adjust the height of the putter and how much it gets exposed at the top of the putter pouch. It used to be called a putter, a quiver pouch. I don't know what to call it that anymore, but essentially this red strap is to allow for that pouch to move up and down, just like that, okay? Going to the side, this should be asymmetrical, meaning that both sides of the bag, side pockets should be the same. There is a red strap here with the Duraflex um, hardware that I just told you earlier. This red strap, is there to help hold a umbrella, a waterfly, I'm sorry, a, um, an umbrella and a stool or a um, retriever, a disc retriever. They have put this pocket right here. You can use it for a mini. The stool or the umbrella will feed into this pocket and it will go through the straps and I will demonstrate this later. And the straps help secure it in place. The pocket itself does have the same YKK zipper and it goes all the way down and it just opens up to a very large pocket. There's also a top pocket right here. This can hold your dry bags, uh, your phone, um, extra towels, extra socks, whatever you want up there. And the rest of it, you can, it's actually a really big pocket. It's just a really odd shape and that's conforms to the, um, the way the bag is sh shaped from t t bottom to top, okay? Moving on from there, oh, just want to mention this pocket right here does have a pencil holder in his as well. So that's three pencil holder um, uh, places and the other side has the same identical uh, pocket. So therefore there's four pencil holders in this bag located in different areas. The, um, this is a water bottle holder, it is insulated and it is this bright red with the grip logo on it. At the bottom of it does have this little hole right here. I'm going to try to show you right there. That little hole allows for any kind of condensation or sweating of the water bottles or if they if it's uh, raining or if their water is leaking it allows it for it to drain so you're not having water pool at the bottom of this um, pocket this water bottle holder can house up to a 30 32 ounce water bottle anything more than that will not fit because it is too it is not big enough to house a bigger water bottle and i think most people use 32 ounce bottles which is fine so that's the side of that pocket. The other side is identical, exactly the same. It also even has the same straps. The BX3 does not have this feature where the both straps are on each side of the pocket or the bag. So that means you can put your stool or your umbrella on either side that you want, depending on how you set up your other items. If I open this up right here, it's identical to the other side. Um, on the interior, just as much as the other side. The other thing I want to make a note is that this does not have an expandable zipper. The BX3 does have an expandable zipper and same with the AX5. This is just a single pouch. This also saves weight. It also makes the bag a lot slimmer. And I think that's what helps. That's one of my favorite th things about this, this particular model in Grip's lineup. Also want to note that there are D-rings on the top of each side of the bag. And then um, also want to note that on the AX5, there is usually a sleeve that runs right down here to help hold the umbrella. This bag does not have that. It takes that away, but it adds the straps on each side of the bag to allow to hold the umbrella. Moving from there, we have 
some really nice colored straps along with some great padding. I feel like the padding is not as thick as the BX3. I don't know why they did that, but I just want to let you know that. The width of it is wide. I feel like the BX3 may be just a tad bit wider. I do like the accents of the white right here. You can clip things onto here. You can clip things in onto here. Um, it does not have a D-ring on here. I thought grip packs used to have D-ring. Oh, yes, there it is. There's the red D-ring right there. I don't know what you're going to use this for. I generally don't like hanging thing, anything on my shoulder straps because when I sit on the ground, it will touch the ground. So I usually hook my towels up here instead of down here. Um, on this bag right here, it does have the Velcro to keep the straps tidy at the bottom so that it's not dragging on the floor. You also have a sternum strap right here. That's actually a very nice clip uh, and that's also adjustable along with an elasticated band to help um, keep that strap in place. Moving on from there, we have two shoulder pads at the top, not all the way too high, but just high enough. We have a nice white grip logo right here. This pouch right here, a lot of people say that this pouch is to add some extra disc and whatnot. I do not recommend doing that. This pouch is where I would put the Rainfly that is sold separately. And this bag does take the XL Rainfly that can fit the um, BX3 or the AX5. But this is, I, in the past, as far as I know, in the, the original bags, they meant this pocket to hold the Rainfly. Prior to that pocket being there, they were putting it, they were recommending putting it up here. However, when, when the discs were digging into the people's bags, um, down here, they put this padding in here and they decided to put this in, the zipper in here to add it as a pouch. A lot of people want to use it for the valuables and the phones like that. I would not recommend doing that. I actually would just put the rain fly right in here. Moving on from there, there is the same 840D nylon material that comes up and gets stitched right here. So that way you have the 3D mesh material off of the bottom of the bag. And it does, doesn't come, come undone at the zipper points. The straps themselves at the top have this thing that goes across that acts as a hull loop and then um, it does get stitched into this uh, cross stitching right here and it is barn door stitching and overall as far as I know grips in the grip backs in the past have had some quality issues again that lifetime warranty takes care of it so I wouldn't worry about it too much but do know that in the past the stitching can come off I do know that the newer bags are much better with this so the stitching do, do last a little bit longer and the bags overall do last a much longer than the ones that were in the past that is the overview of the pack let's go ahead and fill it up and see how it looks all right, I got the bag filled out and um, I put as much stuff in here as I possibly can. And most of the stuff are items that I normally carry except the stool. Usually I carry the stool in my hand. I do carry this a lot, my retriever. Um, it goes, if I take the cart, it goes to my cart. Like I, I transfer it from bag to bag or, or back to cart. Um, right now I do have um, a towel hooked up to the D-ring so you guys can see what it kind of looks like here. Obviously, this towel can be used to hook up the D-ring on here. I've seen people do that on the shoulder straps. I'm not a fan of that. I like having D-rings on the top right here. Okay, so right now I have three putters in the putter pocket, and I have 20 in the main compartment. We'll go ahead and count that right now. Uh, let's see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. So there's 20 discs in there. There are two, four, six, seven mid-range, and the rest are fairway drivers and um, distance drivers. I also have one approach disc in the, this compartment right here. So you're looking at 24 discs comfortably in this bag. And I think that's kind of where uh, the minimum is. If you have more drivers than the seven mid-range that I have in here, then obviously you can fit more discs. So I'm probably thinking 24 to 28 discs. The side pockets, you cannot put discs in. They're not meant for that. I have it stuffed right now with a, uh, a men's medium size um, hoodie on this side. I have a large long sleeve shirt on this side. And obviously, you know, my essentials in here as well. Um, and then you can carry extra towels and things like that. If you don't need both a hoodie and a long sleeve, then you can obviously fit other things in here. But like I said, this side pocket doesn't have that expandable zipper and I'm okay with that. I don't like those expandable zippers. They look a lot, they look such too bulky when they're sticking out. But this pocket I think does sit a little bit taller than the BX3. I don't know. I'll do a comparison later and um, with, the, with those two, these two bags and you guys can see for yourself. I have the stool over here. It is in its dedicated 
pouch at the bottom here and then it's got the straps strapped down so you can see how it looks on the bag. I did um, try to put this in here with the uh, extra large long sleeve shirt but it's kind of hard to fit. I'm pretty sure I could do it um, but the thing is that when you put it in the zipper does go all the way down so when you do need to open it, it up to get to your items like this, this thing might fall out so just know that and keep that in mind. The other thing you can do is use the other side and that's what's neat about this bag is that it has straps on both sides is symmetrical and identical um, you can go ahead and feed it through here like this and you can kind of see what I'm doing here into the bottom like so and then cinch this down like that get the strap all cleaned up here and now you have a very clean retriever that's not going to move anywhere. It's pretty pretty sturdy. You know, things aren't going to fall out on this bag if you have both sides. So that's the bag fully decked out with all the items. We have a towel here. We have a 32 ounce water bottle and this does come in and out very easily. There's also two more pencil pocket holders right back here if you need to. This bag has pencil holders all over the place. And then there's also more pencil holders at the top right here as well. So it's got plenty of room. Um, I think it can hold eight pencils or markers um, should you um, choose to do so. And uh, yeah, so that's how it's decked out. So yeah, at large capacity, this main pocket, I use it for my phone. I don't like to use it for desks. If you want to fit more desks in here, you can. So you can probably fit two more in here, so that's 30 desks. But I've seen people do it. I don't really care to do that. I like to keep this for my phone and my wallet and my keys to stay in this bag and away from everything. And uh, one thing I wanted to know is that inside this bag, there is this orange clip, orange and red clipper here. This is to hold your keys so that you can know where your keys are at all times inside the pocket because it is a big pocket so that if your keys happen to roll around, you're not looking for it because of this little key clip right here. So that is the bag decked out. Um, I'm going to show you how it looks wearing it with all the stuff on me. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, I have the bag on me right now. I'm going to go ahead and cinch down the um, sternum strap here. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. And there you go. So that's the sternum strap uh, cinched down. And that's what it looks like on my bag with all the stuff in it. There you go. There's a water bottle. And that's how it looks from behind. I am a five foot one female. So I'm pretty short and I have very narrow shoulders. I don't have broad shoulders. But the bag itself does not look too big on me at all. I think it's a really good size out of Grip's lineup. And I love the fact that the main compartment can hold 20 plus discs, which is fantastic. I think I like that kind of bigger opening than the BX3 in my opinion. So you get the, the comforts of uh, 20 plus discs in the main compartment like the AX5, but you get the compact um, uh, profile of a BX3 without compromising disc capacity. So I think that's a great, great thing. And I think it sits a little, sits a little bit shorter than the BX3. Um, so I think that's why I really like this bag. And when I put it on, it's, it's really comfortable. Um, these pouches do not get in the way. It doesn't dig into the side of me or anything. The, um, the water bottle holders, which is, I don't know how grip, grip did it, but they did a really good job of not putting it in a way where it's digging in the side. So I really like that. When I put my arm through, I have a habit of putting this water bottle on this side because I put my arm through th this loop first. So I always leave this empty and I kind of put, usually put my towel over here to have it sit over there. But I have the stool there, so I wanted to show you guys what it looks like. But yeah, you can see how sturdy it is. And it's not moving anywhere and nothing's falling out of this bag, even with the stool and the retriever. So I wanted to show you guys what that looks like. All right, so that's the overall um, overview of the bag. I talked about the capacity of it. Um, it is comfortable. The straps are um, well padded. Um, I do have a little bit of um, gripe about how wide they are, but I'll go over that later on in the video. 
I do have a little bit of gripe with how low it sits compared to the top of the powder package, but I'll go ahead and go over that in the, later on in the video. And then um, functionality, it does function great as a disc golf bag. Um, it doesn't have much versatility, but that's really not Grip's forte. Grip says, you know what? These are the recommendations of how to use the bag. You got the putter pouch, you got the valuables pouch, you got the main compartment, you got this to put all your other miscellaneous items like extra towels, extra um, socks, you know, an extra layer of clothing for uh, hot, cold mornings, things like that. You got clips for your towels, you got ways to secure your uh, stool and your uh, retriever and then you got water bottle holders. So that's it. They have all they all have dedicated spaces for your items and what's really interesting about that is that for the longest time Grip EQ has been really the staple of the bags however it is time to understand that a lot of bags nowadays are becoming more versatile meaning that the the top pouch the top putter pocket um, you only can carry three. You can break this in and carry another one in here, but that's all it can carry is, is just three and that's it. In the side pockets, this is the only size you can't put discs in here. In the water bottle, you can put water bottle in here and that's really where the only place it can go. Um, you can use it for other things like putting your towel in there so that your towel is not hitting the ground, things like that. So overall, it's a great uh, functioning bag. It does a very good job at carrying disc. It does a very good job of carrying your extra items and it does a very good job at holding your water. And that's one of the things that Grip has hit out the park since day one with their backpacks. Um, when I bought, I didn't buy this bag, but when I chose to get this bag as a player's pack, I really was interested in this particular model, the Tour Series model, the A Tour Series, the hybrid. And I think this is like the bag that Grip EQ is kind of like missing because I don't like the bulkiness of the side pockets. I love the main compartment being able to, able to hold 20 discs. And especially if you're gonna go on tour and you're going to be using it to go to a lot of tournaments every single weekend or at least every other weekend, this bag will hold all the discs for you and it will hold all of your essentials for you and it has the ability to hold you know things like your stool or your umbrella without having any kind of instability issues speaking of stability this bag is very stable it is not top heavy i think it's because they move this putter pocket a little bit lower than the bx3 so it doesn't feel top heavy when you put it on it feels very balanced and you can feel all the weight in the center of gravity right here um, taking discs in and out of it it's very it's so stable that it's not a problem even with the disc right here I do prefer leaving this pocket empty to get the disc in and out of it right now It's a little tricky because there's 20 discs in here. Normally I don't carry 20 normally I only carry 18 So as you can see it comes in and out just fine and then on the ends here It does come out just fine on the end of the pockets But it's tight because right now there are 20 discs in here and I've only been carrying like 18 or 19 because I don't carry that many discs on the bag and um so, with that being said, my overall conclusion is this. Um, this bag is meant for someone who does not want to compromise space for discs. They want to be able to carry the 20 discs in the main compartment. They want to be able to carry three putters, maybe four. They want to be able to have a, a pocket for the discs for easy access. And you can actually use this pocket for um, a scorecard keeper or you can just put the scorecard keeper up here but honestly nowadays nobody uses scorecards they use uh, their phones for PDJ live scoring so um, so that's what I think this bag is for this bag is for someone who loves grip EQ who has been using grip EQ and who loves the looks of the grip EQ bags and they like the side pockets they don't want to be using the side pockets for um, for discs and they want they like the cup holders it is it is one of the my uh, my favorite things about the grip eq is this valuable pocket and the cup holder and i've always liked their cup holders because as well as that it's very high quality durable material and i think this is a, that's what this bag is for someone who wants a bx3 because it's smaller than ax5 but they want the carrying capacity of the ax5 and i think that's where this bag lies for those who want that kind of bag and i love the fact that it does sit a little bit shorter than a bx3 it's a little bit lighter than a bx3 even though it carries more discs than a bx3 overall it carries more discs than a bx3 so i think that is my favorite point about this particular bag so those are the some of the things that i like about the bag the fact that it carries uh, a lot of discs with a very small form factor um, i like the fact that it it, take, it took away the sleeve that the AX5 had. I really can't stand that sleeve on the AX5. I think it's a waste of space if you're not using an umbrella or if you don't like using an umbrella for some, like someone like me. 
I think that it was a nice touch to add these red straps on each side so, so that I can carry two different things without putting everything on one side. I think that's great. It kind of helps balance out the bag. I like the fact that they have two cup holders, one on each side. Again, to help balance out, you will need to carry two water um, water bottles, then you can. The downside to that is that if I only carry one water bottle, the other one is empty and it's kind of wasted space. So that's a gripe of mine. Since we're on that topic, another gripe of mine is that I don't like this haul loop. I can't stand it. I never did from day one from grip. I would prefer these straps to be separated and then a separate hull loop up here. I don't like this because it rides on my the back of my neck sometimes if I cinch it down too high because I like my back holding up high. I like it close to my body, to my core, because when it's to my core, it's more balanced and it doesn't kind of like pull back. The, the weight of the bag isn't pulling away from my shoulders. I want it close to my shoulders. And Grip EQ has always done this with the straps and I really don't care for it. But it is a little bit thinner than the, the BX3, less padding than the BX3. So I think that's why overall it's just lighter. I also don't like how low the this uh, anchor points are. Um, the putter pocket sits right up here. I would like the anchor point closer to the top. The closer to the top, the more the weight gets lift, lifted vertical. So when you put it on your shoulders, it gets lifted vertical and off your shoulders more versus when it pulls back away from your shoulders, it puts more weight on your shoulders and that's more fatigue, which reminds me, um, after two rounds with this bag, I will start feeling fatigue down here. And this right here, the reason for that is because right down here, there is a hard plastic, um, piece that's inside this bag because you need a hard plastic piece in order to attach the rails to it and when you do that you have this piece and they have put padding they have done a good job putting this padding in here but it doesn't matter what you do this padding needs to go down here or something or cover it because over time this will dig in and it did do, did do that for me and it's still a lot better than bags I've had in the past especially 2014 so they have come a long way but that doesn't change the fact that you have a hard piece that's sitting back here and over time when you keep when you wear it and you're on the course hiking for two rounds this will eventually start to feel uh, you'll start to feel it on the lower part of your back with this bag it is heavy when you pick it up however the moment you put it on and swing it on it's comfortable and it's not as heavy once you put it on so yeah overall i think the bag looks great it's uh for people who don't like this color and they want a more muted color but still want the ats ledgestone does offer a non-graphics version which is just the dark blue with no graphics anywhere on it so if you want something that's more muted that is available at ledgestone's website um I think that's it. I really don't have anything else that I don't like about the bag. Um, uh, it's just that with the market that we have now, there are other bags that I would prefer using. But if I had to choose a Grip EQ bag, I definitely would choose the ATS. I think it's the right size. I think it's the perfect size for someone who um, wants to go to tournaments every weekend or every other weekend. It's also a good casual round bag. I like the ability to carry 20s if I wanted to, but if I want to carry only 18, this bag will do it very comfortably and not have an issue. I think it's um, it's also a stable bag, and I love the fact that everything is clean compared to having a sleeve for, uh, for uh, an umbrella, and I like the color scheme on this bag. All right, that is my overall conclusion of the Grip ATS. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave it below. I will have another review coming of the Grip BX3 uh, compared to this bag. So I like to put these two head to head. Um, I've been meaning to do the review of this bag for quite some time. I used it for a whole entire month and I had a, I had a really great time in, uh, using the bag. And um, now it's time to move, move on. And I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on this particular bag. And um, it's a great bag. The only thing is that you have to buy it from Ledgestone and it's $229 plus shipping. So that's the only thing is that the price um, is that it's just a little bit uh, high. I think I think $199 would be better for this bag. But Ledgestone's selling it. so And it comes with a special edition, edition disc. Um, I do think that they're going to put it on sale once we get closer to Christmas so or, um, or Thanksgiving. So keep an eye on, on that. If you, want, you guys want one of these, you might be able to find it at a much better better price come uh, Christmas time. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you have any questions or comments, leave it below. And then um, there's a playlist of other dis um, sorry, uh, other bag reviews if you want to check those out. Anyways, you guys have a good day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.